Hello, I'm Stefan Priva. I'm Professor of Social and Community Psychiatry at Queen Mary University of London, and I'm going to present dialogue to you. What is dialogue? Dialogue is a scale of 11 items. Eight items assess subjective quality of life as a patient reported outcome measure, and three items assess treatment satisfaction as a patient reported experience measure. This is different from Dialogue Plus. Dialogue Plus is a full therapeutic intervention which incorporates and utilizes the Dialogue Scale, but goes by far beyond that. If you're interested in Dialogue Plus, there's another video in which I explain that. This here is just about the Dialogue Scale. The Dialogue Scale has 11 questions. How satisfied are you with, and then the life domains, mental health, physical health, job situation, accommodation, leisure activities, partner, family, friendships, and personal safety, and three treatment aspects, medication, practical help, and meetings with the clinicians and the service. These questions do not have very precise definitions. Patients are supposed to fill them in as they understand them. So it may be that they don't have a job, in which case it is a satisfaction with that situation. Or with friendships, they may be very happy with the friends they've got, but feel they should have more friends. So they should fill it in as they currently feel about friendships as a whole. The questions will not address every single aspect in life that may be important, but they have been selected on the basis that they allow patients to raise any concerns that they have got. The treatment aspects are the meetings, again, with the service, with the pay, uh, clinicians in the service, medication, practical help, includes everything else that the service may provide. All questions are answered on a one to seven scale. This is a quality of a visual analog scale, but at the same time, every single point is labeled like on the Likert scale, so it combines different advantages. And patients can then fill in every single question. If they don't like to fill in one item, they can just skip it. I now have to go into psychological test theory because practically all scales that we otherwise use are based on it, either explicitly or implicitly. In psychological test theory, one wants to test an underlying construct like depression, self-efficacy, empowerment. And the items are selected on their ability to contribute to that overall numerical score, but they can't be interpreted in themselves. So the item, I blush more often than other people, contributes to my neuroticism score, but cannot be interpreted as that item because that's not how it has been selected. The scales end with one numerical score, 7, 15.8, 32, 56. This score has no meaning in itself, it's just a number. So it requires sophisticated statistical procedure to demonstrate what it means, how it is associated with other scores and so on, and what the relevance is. Does a difference of three points on that scale, um, does it make any difference to patients? Is it important, is it relevant or not? All that has to be established and always remains somewhat artificial. Dialogue is completely different. Here, every single item is meaningful and relevant. It is a real question. So how satisfied are you with your family means how satisfied are you with your family? It's a question that may be used in a clinical conversation or in everyday life. The meaning of I'm saying I'm not satisfied with my family is totally transparent and does not require any validation. So if I'm saying I'm unhappy with my family, I, that needs to be considered and is relevant. All scores are directly related to the labels of the rating. So I know what a three is, what a four is, what a five is. The consequence is it produces two global scores for quality of life and for treatment aspects, but it also produces 11 meaningful, relevant and actionable satisfaction scores with life domains and treatment aspects. 
Dialog is user-friendly and is useful. It is user-friendly because it's brief. Someone said patients will never rate more than 18 items routinely. This is only 11. It is easy to rate. All scores are transparent and straightforward to the patient, but also to everyone else who is interested in information that is provided. And each score can be used to plan, target, and evaluate specific actions for individual patients, for teams and the clinicians within the teams, and for full organizations. Despite not being designed as a, as a psychological test, it has excellent psychometric qualities. This is not surprising because the quality of life items have been taken from the Manchester Short Assessment of Quality of Life, which has already been used in more than a thousand publications, as well established, well tested. Both the global two global scores, as well as every single item score, have a good distribution, which is crucial for the psychometric qualities. This has been shown in different populations and different cultures. So patients with all sorts of mental disorders, but also physical disorders, and on four different continents. It is, and this is very important, sensitive to change, to different treatments, and to diagnostic groups. And I will show you some examples for this. This is a comparison of patients with depression in blue and psychosis in red. Overall, patients with depression are less satisfied with their life. We know that. That's a sign of depression and a symptom of it and a negative cognitive attribute to most things in life. And if we go through individual items, it's like that. They are less satisfied with the job situation, with the physical health, with the mental health, and so on. But surprisingly, they are more satisfied than patients with psychosis with their family and with their friendship. This is very interesting to academics because it challenges the idea of the cognitive triad of depression. But it's also relevant for services because it shows you what areas we need to target in different groups and also what areas may present strength that we can tap into in treatment. So distinct groups have distinct needs and strengths. These are the data of more than 5,000 patients in routine assessment across East London. We see the job situation is a particular problem where safety patients are relatively happy with, and they also are satisfied with the meeting with professionals. This may be of interest if you compare it with other regions, but in itself, cross-sectional data do not say that much. What does say much are comparisons over time. And here we have comparisons with roughly three months with, um, in between each time point. And what we can see is that the eight areas, eight domains of quality of life improve, which is good to know and reassuring. If we go, however, into the profiles and we see potentially even more interesting data. Initially, although the difference is not much, Patients are less satisfied with their mental health than with their physical health, which you would expect in a mental health service. But over time, this changes. And after a while, patients are significantly less satisfied with their physical health than with their mental health. And this may be plausible because often in mental health services, we tend to ignore uh, patients' physical complaints and I go to the GP and say, never arrives there or the GP struggles to deal with that. So it has direct implications for how we organize the service and that we may instruct clinicians to pay more attention to physical complaints and deal with that. So this is a treatment satisfaction. Throughout, patients are less satisfied with the medications and with the meetings with the clinicians. This is well known. But what is important here is that improves over time. So there's not just an initial honeymoon period and then disappointment kicks in. Now the satisfaction improves and plateaus and after roughly after a year. These are long-term treatments, was about short-term treatment. Here an example of a crisis house, only three weeks of, um, of care. And even in these three weeks, we can see 
significant, statistically significant, and uh, relevant improvement. So that's all picked up by dialogue. In summary, dialogue is well tested, it's user friendly, and it is transparent. It provides scores for quality of life and for treatment satisfaction, but it also provides 11 ratings with important life domains and treatment aspects that you can use for detailed evaluation specific planning. Again, on the level of individual patients, on teams and services, but also on full organizations. And it allows therefore for a new type of patient-centered evaluation and of targeted interventions in community mental health care. And you find more information, all information on this website. Thank you very much.